there is um I'm about to lose my shit, by the way, because I've, I've been, I've, I have, after, I felt like with the, the Dick Masterson shit, if you don't, if you are kind of a new listener, uh, I was pretty chummy with a guy called Dick Masterson, uh, and he was one of the co-hosts of the Maddox show, The Biggest Problem in the Universe. We had a falling out, he started his own show called The Dick Show, and the initial, like, 200 episodes kind of centered around Maddox suing him over various things. Um, one of them being a trademark infringement and the other one being a, uh, I want to say a defamation lawsuit. It's been a while, so I don't remember exactly. Uh, at some point, Dick invites this guy called Digibro into his circle. And Digibro is an autistic pedophile. He's obsessed with Lollicon, and he talks about jerking off to Lollicon because he wishes that he was a little girl being raped or something. It's really fucked up. And when I'm ta- I'm talking to to talking to them in like a private Discord years and years ago, the producer of the Dick Show, a guy named Riley, uh, tells me to fuck off unambiguously. So I say I say to Dick on his podcast, in short, that um, I feel like I've been given the hint to leave. And I find your position on Lollicon because of my experience with dealing with Lollicons while moderating and administrating image awards. I know that they're pedophiles, and I know that if you are associated with these people, you will inevitably eat shit for it. So that was my last conversation with him. Um, <clears throat> in fact, I've, I've avoided even, I think I avoided even tagging him on Twitter for years since then. I felt like I got utter and complete fun, final closure on the dick show shit with that conversation. I think that I made my point really well and he did not. And, um, the other thing with Riley was that he was fucking like, a he's Riley was, I think he still is. He's fucking like a mentally handicapped girl. A, a, a girl named mint salad called into the dick show. She was a furry artist. She made really amateurish out because she's heavily autistic. She made shitty art for furries porn for furries her parents said we don't like you doing this um so you you're either going to stop drawing furry porn or you're going to leave our house dick suggests to her that she's an adult so therefore she should choose furry porn over her family this girl leaves her family and ends up um in the dick show circle and ends up in a relationship with riley who was the producer for the dick show after this fight with dick at some point, Riley gets kicked off, and Digibro, uh, Riley, and Mint become like a, a little group. And at some point, Riley starts pimping her out. So there are sex videos of this retarded woman that Dick basically furloughed from being in her parents' home into Riley's possession. And now he pimps her out, and there are, are these truly, genuinely sad videos of a mentally handicapped woman and grandma underwear with skid marks in them uh having sex because uh that was her fate as a result of calling into the dick show and asking for a good opinion about if uh she should choose furry porn or her own family um i thankfully by the time this happened i was already gone so i had no association with dick when this happened and then dick got involved in the cutie shit where he kept defending cuties even though it was being prosecuted in the state of texas as being um Uh, child pornography according to the DOS standard Um, there are these logs that leaked where he um, was basically he's in a long term relationship with 80's girl and this relates to Maddox Maddox was in a relationship with a girl called 80's girl that's just her name they're all about the same age Uh, she's in her 40's now I think and Dick stole his girl and that was a huge win. He's like, yes, I stole your bitch. I'm fucking your bitch and shit. So he keeps 80s girls as like a trophy of his total, total and utter humiliation of Maddox. And uh, I believe because she is a school teacher, she wants kids and Dick does not want kids because he's a man child and he will never grow up and he'll never have a family. So I believe that he's strung her along saying, if we have kids one day, it'll be like, whatever, you know, I'll change and stuff. But I think that he is like secretly vasectomized and has strung her along until she's infertile because now that she's 40, she's not going to have a child. Um, And he did that to her. And I think that's unforgivable. I think that he 
purposely deceived her into staying in a relationship with him so that he could have his Maddox trophy uh, over him forever. Um, <clears throat> but at some point, because he likes to present himself as being a big macho swinger who has lots and lots of pussy, uh, he tried to arrange a threesome between 80s girl and this utterly, totally unhinged woman. I forget her name, but um, she ended up leaking emails between 80s girl and and herself where 80s girl was lamenting the fact that dick was a man child that they'll never have a family that she wants kids so on and so forth and um <clears throat> that dick masterson liked to dress up as a cow called juju the cow and get fucked in the ass uh by a strap on if i'm remembering correctly i could be wrong but i'm pretty sure that's what the details of the email were uh this uh, threesome i don't think even happened but he tried to arrange it and it failed and uh so the simpspiracy this is the name of it and it's all documented in the thread and there's a you might be wondering josh you've not talked about this in years and yet you and yet you've known about it and i have and i mostly ignored it because even though i had a falling out with dick i didn't want to be like a scorned lover and just start going scorch earth on them and bringing up all this stuff that i honestly i didn't even care about but now that i've seen the emails and i know that it's pretty bad he was gaslighting the fuck out of these two women didn't get what he wanted and came out looking like a retard i bring it up now because i finally figured out what vito gasaldi is if you don't know vito gasaldi is someone who has on multiple occasions heavily implied that he is uh, sexually attracted to children he is a close friend i think he's even been roommates with max carson a man who is undoubtedly a pedophile who is now writing articles about how it should be okay to watch child pornography i'm 100 percent convinced is a pedophile uh, based on his behavior and who is close friends with vito who i'm also concerned uh or convinced is a pedophile so i've always wondered why he keeps this fat pedophile on his show why he rebooted the biggest problem in the universe with a fat pedophile named Vito, and i made a tweet um in regards to something i'll talk about in a second and i made a tweet and i said um i'll quote myself on this actually so i'm not just show you what i said I said in reply to the video that I watched, I'm about to show you. I said, at Dick Masterson, you're going to get slaughtered like a pig, you fucking idiot. You bet your career on a greasy, fat pedophile and his retarded comic book. Stop harassing this black dude and find another obsession. You're such a fucking idiot. Holy shit. He responds to this with the message, why are you guys so obsessed with Vito? So let me repeat this. Dick Masterson, you are going to get slaughtered like a pig. You fucking idiot. You bet your career on a fat, greasy pedophile. So other hand, I now have five on one hand and one on the other. Uh, and his comic book, two for Vito. Back to the back to the deck. Stop. You stop harassing this black man and find another obsession. You're such a fucking idiot. Holy shit. I mentioned Vito twice indirectly. And I mentioned Dick seven times. He responds to this saying, why are you guys so obsessed with Vito? And I, I literally, I went, I walked to the store to get an energy drink before my podcast. And on the walk there, it clicked, it clicked in, in a br bright, shining star in my head. I realized what it is. He realized with his podcast, the biggest problem in the universe before that Maddox sitting next to him made him look good. And because he's now Juju the cow, a, uh, washed up 40 year old who can't arrange a threesome but pretends to who pimps out mentally retarded women to his retarded pot, uh producers and um who, who gets again gets fucked in the ass as juju the cow he needs someone really really gross to make him look good in comparison so he found a pedophile to take all the heat for him because if you ever get there and you say anything to him about him and Vito, he will always immediately deflect to Vito Gasaldi and say, why are you beating up on poor Vito? He's only a pedophile. And I get it now. He is terrified of having any kind of flame poured on him directly. Actually, what's really, really funny is that he's been in response to this. Oh, he talked. He did actually respond to this finally. Yeah, I'm somehow only the only furry in the world who doesn't talk about it all every day. Memorial of modern science. It's a total deflection. I'm not calling you a furry. I'm calling you a man who gets dressed up as a cow and gets fucked in the ass by women. But he was late to reply to this. He replied to everything else first and then finally got around to it. I guess after the podcast started. Yeah. 
I guess hoping I wouldn't see it. I just saw it. Very. I think that I think that he's afraid of people focusing on him and not Vito. So he puts this this uh, honey pot out next to him so that people will just talk about Vito because he's so much easier to make fun of because he's so viscerally disgusting, uh, easily readily contemptible in every way, shape, and form. And I'm I'm just sick of him because you know I went from like gradually just like oh what a fucking idiot I can't believe he's doing this himself to why is he doing this like I understand that he wants to be contrarian but the cutie shit's a line too far to like really you're gonna have this fucking pedophile be on your stream and you're gonna defend him like is that really where you're going and now I I think he's actively malicious and I'll let um he has this ongoing feud with Eric July Eric July is a black man he puts out a comic he makes several million dollars off his comic because his comic is like a generic all all you know alt tech like anti-woke just like the most beige color of conservatism that exists in, in the united states right now the most profitable form of uh we're not going to be dc marvel we're going to make an old-fashioned comic book with dudes and being manly men and so on and so forth something that dick should honestly love because that's his brand but Vito, the pedophile is also an aspiring comic book artist and they're jealous that this guy makes several million dollars so Vito kickstarts his own bullshit comic book it makes um i want to say less than a hundred thousand dollars and for months for months i have heard nothing about this show except that eric uh that dick is obsessed with eric july just obsessed with him just obsessed with every decision he makes if he decides to get a 3pl or a warehouse or whatever the fuck he's doing every decision he makes is like an is put under a microscope for some reason and it's not interesting it's not interesting to hear about the black guy getting into a new business with a million dollars and trying to figure out how to do everything the right way like maybe in passing but that seems to be what his entire show is based on now so eric july comes out and he puts out this video and i wasn't expecting this black guy to to drop the receipts and follow a convincing argument against dick and Vito. maybe you've heard um, but what the gist of what's happened is that Eric July is now being sued by a church over trademark infringement. And I don't know the specifics of that, but I do believe based on what he says that Dick and Vito have instigated this trademark suit. They've been contacting both the church and, um, a comic book for kids charity under a fake name trying to convince them to either cut ties with this guy and his comic book or to file a, a trademark infringement lawsuit against him for, for use of a coincidental appearance or some shit. So uh, I will just let him go on. It's a couple of minutes, but let's see. So I'll start right, right, right around here and we'll see. To see this, he states, I would be curious to know when the decision was made to make a comic book character using the same name as the International School of Ministry. Has Mr. July received any funding to aid him in the creation of superheroes? This is the email from the fake name. Uh, his name in the fake email is like Roy something. Um, this is the account. It's a uh, obtuse gnome is the actual email address that the Roy is sending from. It is a fan of the Dick Show or an account like this. Your local garbage man here to ban your shite opinions. Um, it follows only Dick and Vito and the biggest problem in the universe podcast. And then he brings up this that they tweeted publicly um, about this charity that they were interfering with. And then he finds out that this, I'll just let him explain this. Entire email chain in the original from Mark, who was the owner of comic books for kids. Sharing this may have been a critical error because we were able to obtain the entire email chain. In the original email, you see that Vito tried to block out the name. The original contact is from the same email from a guy by the same name. Yet again, concern trolling, this time acting as if he is so concerned about comic books for kids being scammed. Here's the original email. Without the name being blacked out, you see Mark refers to him as Roy. Again, what we have here is Vito himself using the term we which would suggest he's included with this specific contact. Which is exactly what he did when he said that he was including himself in pedophiles, by the way. He needs to really stop using the royal we 
when talking about pedophiles and people fucking with this guy's business. Never mind if this could be interference, just how involved are they in this? Well, here they are on the show referring to contacting comic books for kids. So we contacted that charity. Uh, so this it's is just the- outright admitted it. This is like, like okay, you have emails. I guess it's like an account that's kind of following him. Eh, it could be like a fan doing things without their exact permission. No, Dick explicitly saying we contacted the fucking charity. The final email that I got. So we have a tweet where he uses this email, seemingly pointing to an example of we being in contact with the charity. And on video, it looks as if he does something similar. Remember, this is all a concern troll, and one can question if they care about this charity at all. They did down talk them as well. Comic books. Is there for enough kids. backstory for comic books for kids? Okay. Yeah. And at first, I thought maybe I shouldn't talk about this because I don't want to fuck up that guy's deal. The, com- right. the comic the, the, book the charity, charity guys. Sure. Yeah, but then I thought, ah, oh, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a bad. Uh, shocking shockingly stupid fucking thing to say i was aware that this is probably the wrong thing to do both legally and morally but then i decided you know what i don't actually give a fuck literally word for word you could not ask for a better admission of actual malice than that that is actual malice that you just put on record and now you now have to backtrack as being a joke in court if it goes to court charity first of all and this is where i said well i probably shouldn't say this kind of stuff because it'll fuck up this guy's deal but again it's already happened fuck it perhaps screaming false flagger turns a lie into truth or something or makes one feel justified in their questionable behavior if you think that this was in response to those nonsensical allegations against me in early august well look at the timestamp. the claims that were in reference to the charity were made a full month before that These claims could have been an attempt to get myself or the company in trouble with the state, and I didn't initiate that. What does false flagger even mean in this context? Here we see one of them saying, I am on a false flagging spree because this account that was suspended, but the suspended account doxed one of our warehouse addresses and a personal home address. Apparently that is false flagging. Could it be that someone is working overtime to attempt to ruin my life and what I've built? I mean, this was said in that video. I, man, I, I'm an asshole for fun. I like it. If I can say I'm doing it for kids, it's just a socially acceptable way for me to act like a psychopath. Yeah. See, so this is a big opportunity for me to be cruel to people. I think this is also, it's really important that it's called motivation. How expensive this is going to be, that's the golden question. So now the rules for the playing field have been set and I'm the responding agency. Parties have shown that they have no problem either using the state against us themselves or running op campaigns to maybe push someone else to do it for them. This impacts not only myself, but the dozens of other employees and contractors that work for our company. And we sniffed out this out a long time ago. But if we do- So, I mean, there's no other way to spin it. Dick is malicious. He's fucking with this guy. They're jealous about the success of his comic book. And they're actively trying to ruin it. I believe that they sent those emails to try and instigate a lawsuit and also interfere with his uh, ability to form contracts and fair business. And I think that he should go after him. And I hope that he fucking wins. Um... It's it's crazy to me that he's so comfortable saying dumb shit like that on this podcast. And I realized that there's been, because I've never talked about him, I stopped watching his show and people, I mean, the main thing is that enough people have stopped watching his show because it's fucking boring. And he talks about how much he hates women and fat people over and over again. And then talks about this guy in the corner of his podcast. And that's all he does every episode, every time, the exact same shit over and over again he's lost even like a log followers who just report on the dumb shit that he says and it's it's clear that with a total lack of accountability and just him and this fucking fat pedophile bouncing off each other endlessly over years has allowed him to feel so comfortable in like this little little cesspit that he's dug out for himself that now he feels comfortable saying whatever he wants and he's completely okay fucking with this guy's business he's completely okay trying to ruin him just because he doesn't like him and uh it's really it's really i really hope that the accountability he desperately needs is going to come in the form of this fucking guy in his lawsuit and i hope he wins uh like i said i hope he gets slaughtered like a pig i think that he will um 
And I, I feel remiss not making fun of the Juju the Cow shit earlier because it's really clear now with Vito that he is afraid of any sort of direct criticism and he's just going to deflect everything to his fat, retard, pedophile friend that sits next to him. And here's the great thing. Here's the funniest fucking thing ever. This is, this it makes me so happy. I know how this is going to play out because we've already seen it play out with the greatest problem in the universe. When Maddox sued Dick, he didn't just sue Dick. He sued a couple people. One of them was Asterios Kokonos. Asterios was um, a comedian that he knew he was friends with in L.A. Asterios had made regular appearances on The Biggest Problem in the Universe. And when Dick did The Dick Show, Asterios went over to The Dick Show, and he continued to do bits with, uh, with Dick Masterson over there. When Maddox sued him, uh, Asterios did not make any money from the Dick Show. Dick Show was raking in $25,000 a month, if you can believe the Patreon. At least $25,000 a month, not including any other um, merchandise. It's just Patreon, $25,000 a month. And considering how much money Dick made over the LOL suit, how much attention he made over that, how big that was, and how formative that was to his podcast, Asterios really seemed to believe that Dick would pay for his defense. He would pay for Asterios to get uh, um, defended, and that did not happen. He paid out of pocket, and he was fired from his company because uh, his company his company was also sued. And since the company was being sued and they had to shell out for a very expensive lawyer, um, they decided that it was not worth keeping Asterios around. The value that Asterios added to their company versus what it was costing them to pay for this lawsuit was not worth it, and Asterios lost his job because of Maddox. And Dick did absolutely nothing to help him he paid i think a little bit of money for like his bits and stuff but it was not nearly enough to help him recover from the life ruination that Maddox tried to inflict on him and quite frankly succeeded in and now i know sitting here watching this that the day will come where Vito and dick are independently named as co-conspirators in this um torturous interference case or whatever the fuck that eric july is going to bring against them and when that happens dick will lawyer up and Vito will lawyer up, and Vito will pay his own cost, and Dick will not pay a fucking cent. And Vito will be scorned, sitting there thinking, but I'm your pedophile henchman. I sit there and allow and get called pedophiles so that nobody brings up the fact that you get fucked in the ass while dressed as a cow by other by women. Uh, when you try to set up your failed threesomes, you get fucked in the ass as a cow, and I'm, I get called a pedophile for it. it. That's not fair. You should be paying for my attorney. And Dick will go, nope, nope. You're not getting a penny. You're going to defend yourself. You're going to bankrupt yourself. You're going to live on the fucking street. And I'm going to find another fat, greasy, dime a dozen L.A. scumbag pedophile to take your place so I can keep doing my show and making my money. You dumb bitch. And I can't wait. I'm filled with so much spite and so much mirth in knowing that this is coming. I see it clear as day. And I just, I just can't wait. To see bad things happen to bad people. Chat. So, those, those are my long overdue thoughts on Dick. And his, uh, his little game that he's playing. With this dude, who honestly, like I don't know much about him, but if he's just making a comic book, leave him the fuck alone. Just let the nigga make his fucking comic book. Is there a single reason why this nigga can't make a fucking comic book and make a dime off it? Is there a single fucking reason? Is there something I'm missing that I don't know about this guy where this nigga can't make a comic book? Can someone can someone fill in the gap? What am I missing here? What am I missing about about the 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 comic book that I need to know that makes him a bad guy and shouldn't be allowed to make money off the comic book? Crabs in a bucket, is that it? He's black, you think it's a racially motivated thing? He's not a child, so so they don't care about him. Look, I don't know. Yeah, I, I really, I just, I just don't fucking get it. He's now anti anti woke. That's so fucking gay. Just leave him alone. I, I even said this at a certain point with, uh, with Maddox. There was a point where he was banging on about Maddox, and I said, you really got to stop with this lawsuit. It's really obvious that he's like, he's losing his fucking mind, and it's gone on for too long. Find something else. 
And it's clear with this guy. But this guy, unlike with Maddox, this guy's in a position of power. He's at his peak. He's making his, he's he's getting along with his fucking comic book. Everyone likes him. Apparently, he gets around a lot with libertarian circles talking about how, fuck it, if they're going to make shitty comics, we're going to make our own comics. We're going to make them better. And people like him. So now Dick is in the position of weakness because he's been talking about cuties and having Vito on a show for three fucking years now. So more power to him. I wish him, I honestly, honest to God, this, this, this man, he's a brother. I wish this brother the best in his future endeavors. Heard. She. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CAC of Remember to like and subscribe.